So what I gained uh, was, uh, honestly, I was able to kind of gain a little bit more self-confidence um, because you guys provided such a safe space uh, for us to express ourselves, for us to create, to learn. And also it was really, really cool to like learn about all the different art programs that uh, were available locally and uh, from around the world as well. Really gave us the impression that art is um, not just expressive, but healing and and really um, that it's open to everybody, that there's no limits really when it comes to art, no matter uh, it, what your challenges are in life, you know, art is always there and in any form. For me, it was mostly getting back to my love of arts. I hadn't been doing it for a long, long time. Um, when I had my brain tumor removed, I'd lost all my long-term memories and some of my short-term. And over the last 11 years, I think to remember how to read music, it took me almost five years to remember. To remember how to crochet, it was almost seven years. And even just getting back to feeling comfortable, I used to love doing art. So it, it connected me with part of what was made before one of my big border crossings, was, which was gaining my life back after the brain tumor. It was like coming back again, at, like Karen would say, with the love of art, and you always have it in you, and it just something that was able to, you know, to network with other community organizations, see what they're doing, and also the the journey of what some of the artists, the facilitators were going through, and it, it, it was a, a real uh, eye-opener. The people who, who were also part of it, and the different groups, everyone added, because when you get to see a bunch of different people, and they're coming together, and they're throwing their ideas out there, and then the leaders were throwing their ideas out there, it made it so that it opens up your mind to new possibilities and we, we discuss things. Um, for, for me, it, it was a very, very worthwhile experience. We did start a new program called Discovering Yourself Through Art and it's currently uh, still ongoing because we just started it two weeks ago. And um, this program we specifically created for newcomer women from NCP and we specifically created it for women is because we feel that um, it's important to have these safe spaces created uh, for women to be visible, to feel comfortable, to share their experiences and their stories and um, and it just shows how much it's needed because uh, we, we're actually at capacity right now and um, because of that we, we know that it's such a, an important need in the community. So it's an interactive uh, arts workshop and it includes different mediums. So for example, the first session that we had, we created vision boards and uh, a lot of them have never created vision boards and I know it sounds, some, it sounds so simple but for them, giving them that space to share, to dream, to imagine and to actually put it physically on a board uh, and to use it as a reminder to show, to remind them what is truly important to them uh, was honestly um, humbling for me to be a part of and just to hear them sharing their dreams really was, uh, was humbling for me personally. And actually yesterday I was able to facilitate a workshop with them and I helped them learn how to create a mandala and I briefly taught them a bit about the history of the mandala and where it came from. And uh, why we decided to do this was to kind of, through the creation of mandalas, it helps, uh, it helped me and the participants um, kind of be in the moment. And it's through the repetitive creation of like the patterns when you're creating the mandala, you're able to be in the moment. Uh, and it is in those moments that you're not really thinking about the past, you're not thinking about the future, you're just simply being present, and it's, uh, it was a form of self-expression. We, we gained a lot of um, ideas for some of the workshops that we've done, and one of the workshops was art th uh, therapy through art. So 
from what Denise learned and from what I did in my own research, and she actually sent me the legacy tiles too and the slides. So what I could learn through that, I also put towards my part of the workshop, and then we did it with our staff, and we did we did it we did lots of activities with the staff. Uh, in our workshops, I did uh, pour painting. Uh, fluid art with them and Vicky did some um, I did the hand um, you draw your hands and we listen to some music and I asked them to think about their emotions and where they've been where they want to be where they've come from you know all of those things and put it in their art for their hands and then ex if they wanted to to share it with us so some of them wanted to share it with us and some of them didn't so it was a really nice activity to see some people are feeling very anxious at the beginning, which my hand was showing. And then the second hand, I was starting to calm down and I was enjoying what we were doing and everybody was very receptive. So we started to enjoy it. And my other hand showed that in the colors and things that I wrote and put on my other hand. We did, I did stained glass windows as well. So we used little glue, sp sparkle glue, and we drew pictures and we put um, the glue on the windows and you know towards the end you could see that we all lightened up they were laughing we were making jokes it was uh, more fun and um, the art was individual too so whatever they were feeling at the beginning and at the end their art reflected through their own individual products that they made so and they were all like love the end products so yes they made. So the program we're looking to develop is called ARTH, which is Artists Reinforcing Togetherness Hub. It's going to be a community of resources, networking, and learn. We want people with disabilities or artists who want to have a career in art. Maybe there's a lot of things that they don't have access to. Everything from how do you register your business, the tax implications and the tax benefits. Uh, how do you reach out to galleries and actually start to get your art displayed? So we are looking that it will start off first as a, just like an art class, and we've been in talks with the art gallery in Mississauga collaborating on that. So this has been, you know, the whole program, the legacy, has been a great opportunity for us to connect with the AGM and hopefully with the other participating organizations. And with the art program, we're planning more on that networking uh, with other artists, and we are um, planning to do like a resource and a community hub. And that that is important because this is what a lot of artists uh, with disability even artists in general and, uh, and older adults, they want a chance to, to see what other people are doing and this is the opportunity that access to accessibility will be able to provide in our new art program. Well, in September, I put on, uh, I was the speaker for the Mississauga Rights Group and I did a summation of all 10 weeks, and then I gave a workshop on intuitive painting. And everyone, most of them had to go out and buy materials because they haven't been doing art. And they were willing to do it, they showed up, they had their materials. I think a lot of them were quite excited because by doing it as a workshop, they weren't just given a blank piece of paper, and now do something with it. You know, I told them, you know, you take the blue paint and you, 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 you paint at the top of the page, et cetera, et cetera. And so it makes it so it's an easy way to get into art. And I was thinking that it would maybe have had the same effect that it did when we did it in the uh, uh, legacy program. I thought it was profound what we actually created. And I'm not sure that I got that same reaction from the people from the Mississauga Writers Group, but it certainly has the potential for that.